If you've just ordered or picked up your brand new iPhone 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro, or 14 Pro Max, you're probably upgrading from a previous generation iPhone. And unless you're crazy like me and doing this every couple of months, it's probably been a few years since you've moved from one iPhone to another. So in this video, I figured we'd do a quick walkthrough of the initial setup and full migration from your old iPhone to your brand new iPhone. This video is sponsored by Shaker and Spoon. And because I just literally unboxed my iPhone 14 Pro, we'll be basically doing this in real time so you can see the full process to get up and running on your brand new iPhone. Now, before we get to the setup of the new phone and the migration from the old, we need to do a couple of things depending on the migration path we select. Now, if we're gonna be using Restore from iCloud, which we'll talk about in a moment, you wanna make sure that backups are turned on on your device. So go to settings, tap on yourself at the top, then click on iCloud, then iCloud backup. You wanna make sure that backup is turned on. And if you haven't done a recent backup, go ahead and click backup now so that it can complete a full backup. Now, if you're a bit old school and you want to use iTunes on Windows or Finder on a Mac, first connect your phone to the computer. Then make sure you click encrypt local backup and set a password if requested and hit backup now. Now the process of backing up from the lightning connection on the iPhone to a computer is going to take some time depending on the amount of data that you have. If you go to settings, general, iPhone storage, you'll see that my device has about 65 gigabytes of used space on my iPhone. Now this initial backup to my Mac took well over an hour to do the backup. And for some reason created a folder that was almost 195 gigabytes compared to the 65 gigabytes that I have you know, on my actual device. So something to keep in mind, it's going to take a while to do the initial backup from your old device if you're going to a Mac or PC. All right, so now that we have backups taken care of either through iCloud or through a computer connection, we're ready to turn on and start the configuration of your new iPhone. So we'll go ahead and press and hold the power button. And what I have here is the iPhone 14 Pro in the space black. And this is the first time I'm seeing it and it looks amazing. And I can't wait to test it out and put it through its paces and test out all the features. I'm really excited to try this out. And there we are, we are ready to go with the setup of this new iPhone. We're gonna swipe up and we should get alert on our other device asking us to do a quick setup and there it is. So we'll go ahead and hit unlock to continue and we'll scan my face. And what this is going to do is actually do the initial setup of the Wi-Fi connection and your Apple ID so you don't have to type in all that information again. So you're going to use your old iPhone's camera and scan this orb code looking thing on the new iPhone. So we'll just place the camera over it. It's going to scan it. it, says, okay, that's the iPhone that wants to be set up. It's gonna take just a moment. See, it says just a moment. And there we go. So it says, we need to continue on the other phone. So from here, we're going to select Jerry. I don't know why that's on there, but we'll continue. And now we need to type the passcode of the other phone just to verify that we are the owner of this phone. So I typed the passcode and it says, setting up your iPhone said it will take a few minutes to activate your phone. So you can see that it's already connected to Wi-Fi up at the top. I didn't have to do anything for that. It transferred all of the Wi-Fi information from the previous iPhone. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds. And now what it's asking me to do is to transfer my phone number from the old phone to the new phone. And one thing to point out is that the North American version of the iPhone 14 line does not have a physical SIM card. So previous devices, you could just pop out the SIM card, the physical SIM card from the old device and stick it in the new and you're good to go. Well, you can't do that with the North American version, at least version of the iPhone 14 phones. So what this is going to do is actually transfer my cellular information from my old phone to my new phone and use the new eSIM, the electronic SIM built in. Now I am an AT&T user. So if you have AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, any of the big carriers in the US, this should be a pretty seamless transition. Now, if you're using an MVNO or another smaller carrier in the US, you probably need to use that carrier's app to transfer your number. So in that instance, you would actually skip this process and wait till your phone is set up, install the carrier app and do the migration that way. But because I'm using at and I'm going to hit transfer phone number. It's gonna say, transfer your SIM to this iPhone. Once the number is transferred to the iPhone, it will stop working on the other iPhone. And I'm okay with that. We're going to hit transfer number. And that should take probably about 60 seconds or so. Got a little bit of progress after about two minutes. Now it says connecting to network. And there we go. So 
the migration of my phone number from my old iPhone 13 Pro has completed to my iPhone 14 Pro. So we are good to go with cellular connection. So we're gonna hit continue. And we're just gonna set the iPhone 13 Pro down now because we probably won't need to do much with that. So now we have to set up Face ID. And if you haven't done that before, we'll just hit continue. And it tells you to set up Face ID, position your face in the camera, then move your head in a circle to show all angles of your face. So we'll hit get started. All right, so show my face. And I'm just gonna spin my head around like so. And that's gonna ask you to do it one more time usually. Well, now it says use Face ID with a mask. Face ID is most accurate when it's set up for full face recognition only, but you can use a mask. So we can say either yes or no. If you ever use a mask and you wanna be able to unlock it while wearing a mask, then go ahead and hit that top button and it will scan your face again. We'll just say no for right now, but you can do that again later in the settings. So that's pretty interesting. In previous versions of iPhones, you had to do two face scans to set up Face ID, but this only actually took one, so that's new. All right, so Face ID is set up, we'll continue. Now we get to the part where we transfer our data. So right here, it's showing two options, download from iCloud or transfer from phone. So I tapped on other options just to see what the options were and it's sitting here spinning at setting up your Apple ID. I wanted to see what it showed as other options. All right, so this brought us to the full list of restore options. So again, we have restore from iCloud backup. We have restore from a Mac or PC like we kind of touched on earlier. Transfer directly from iPhone, move data from Android or don't transfer apps and data. All right, so the three options really are these top three that we're gonna talk about real quick. The restore from iCloud backup essentially uses that backup that we just created a few minutes ago using the iPhone 13 Pro. The restore from Mac or PC will use that backup on the computer if you used iTunes on Windows or the Finder on Mac OS. And transfer directly from phone means it takes everything from this phone and wirelessly transfers it to this device. Now there are pros and cons to each of these. If you restore from an iCloud backup, it takes all of that information that was stored here and downloads it onto here. So any data that you have selected to be backed up from this iPhone that gets backed up to iCloud will download. Now that does not include apps because apps are not included in the backup. However, it does have essentially links to all of those apps. So when you do a restore from iCloud backup, it will restore that data from your apps. If you have saved files or other things inside those apps, it will download that from iCloud into the new phone. Then what's gonna happen after all of that is done, it's going to tell all of the apps that you've already downloaded that they need to be downloaded again. So the setup process for this is actually pretty quick. You can be up and running using your phone while you wait for your apps and some other background data to download. And the downside to that is that that's probably a lot of app data that needs to be downloaded from the internet. So depending on your connection speed, it may not be the best option for you. Transfer directly from iPhone will transfer everything from your old iPhone to your new iPhone, including the apps. So nothing will have to be re-downloaded from the internet. This is a great option if you do have a slower internet connection and you just don't wanna wait for however many hours it would take to download everything back onto your phone. However, the downside to directly transferring from one iPhone to another is that during that process, you cannot use either of these devices. Both of these phones will be completely locked up during the whole migration process. In previous years when I've done this transfer directly method, it has taken a couple of hours sometimes depending on the amount of data. Again, I have about 60 or 70 gigs of data on my iPhone 13 Pro and to transfer that wirelessly to my new iPhone can take some time. And if you have more data than that, you're looking at multiple hours that you have to just sit and watch your devices because you can't do anything with them. Now, if you wanna go with restoring from a Mac or PC where the data backup is on the computer itself, that's kind of a hybrid approach. What's gonna happen with that is when you do the restore from the Mac, all of your documents and data will be downloaded or restored from the local backup on the computer. However, applications will still need to be re-downloaded from the internet. So in my opinion, the best way to do this, if you have a good internet connection, is restore from iCloud backup. As long as you have a previous backup ready to go from your previous iPhone and you have a decent internet connection speed, that is going to be the fastest way to be up and running on your new iPhone, even though it's still doing some stuff in the background, getting other things downloaded and ready to go. But you can at least use your device, make calls, send messages, whatever you need to do. 
And if for some reason you need to use your old phone, it does not completely lock you out of using your old phone during the migration. So we're going to tap restore from iCloud backup. It's gonna ask me to choose a backup from my list of devices. So I have latest iPhone backups today, 513, that's my 13 Pro. So we'll select that one. And we're gonna say, yes, we wanna make this my new iPhone. So we're gonna transfer everything. We're gonna transfer my Apple Watch, my Apple Wallet items, settings, and my apps and data. And if you wanna see what some of these are, you can click on settings, for example, it'll transfer whatever you have for settings for Siri, appearance, display zoom, analytics, and things like that. Apple Wallet is gonna be your credit cards or debit cards that are stored in there. And of course, my Apple Watch. So we'll hit continue. And yes, we wanna keep our iPhone up to date. It's going to add our Apple cards and other Apple Wallet items. And it's gonna go through each card individually. And you can always choose to finish setting those up later. And when you're done with the wallet, you get a little bit of information on the new emergency SOS features, including the satellite service that'll be available later this year and crash detection. Continue. And now we are restoring from iCloud. So it's 534 right now. This should take just a few minutes to download the basics of what is needed for the restore to continue in the background. So we'll see how long that takes. So it's been about four minutes and the iPhone has just started its first reboot. This will probably take just a few minutes to complete the reboot and then we'll continue the restore. But while we're waiting for it to boot up, let's just take another look at that space black fingerprint magnet iPhone 14 Pro. It looks pretty darn good, you know, except for the fingerprints. But oh my gosh, it just looks really nice. You know what's nice is that it's actually black compared, I don't know if you can see this, my graphite Apple Watch Series 7 is not black, it's graphite, unfortunately. If it was still black like the previous versions, it would look so good together. Now it just looks okay, I guess. Okay, so the device has rebooted and it brought over all of my lock screen configuration from my previous device. And you can even see just barely, you probably can't see it on camera, but I just barely see the outline of the planet Earth on my screen because of the always on display. So we'll just go ahead and tap it and you can see it come back on just a little bit. Type my passcode and there you go. So all of my stuff has been migrated from my previous iPhone, all of the data, has been migrated, the settings, the configuration, the setup. Now it's just in the background downloading the some of the data and the applications themselves. So yes, we wanna use this like iPhone for location. And there you go. So we started around 5.15 verifying the backup on this iPhone 13 Pro via iCloud. It's now 5.41, so about 25 minutes or so to get fully set up, even with the explanations of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So it should go a little bit faster for most people. But as you can see, all of these icons are kind of faded out because it's downloading all the apps in the background. So if you go to the app library, you'll see everything's pretty much faded out. So this will take just a little bit of time to download in the background and you're able to use your phone. You're able to play around with the brand new camera on your iPhone 14 or 14 Pro. You're able to send messages or browse the web with Safari or start setting up all of your lock screens, some of the new features with iOS 16. You can do whatever you want because you're not waiting for three hours for the direct transfer to complete from the old device. And that's pretty cool. So that's the process of migrating your data to your new iPhone 14 or 14 Pro. It's pretty simple. You just have to make sure your backups are enabled and already done on your previous iPhone, and then the migration process goes pretty smoothly. Just make sure that you stay connected to an internet connection while it finishes its work downloading everything to the new device. This thing's gonna continue doing its work in the background, but I get to actually start using my new toy. I'm really excited to play around with it to test out the camera, the dynamic island, and all the features of iOS 16 on the brand new iPhones. And if you're interested in my thoughts on that, definitely hit subscribe and hit the notification button if you want notifications of the new videos. And after a long day of reviewing tech products, there's no better way to relax than with a nice adult beverage. But I never seem to have the ingredients I need to make a world-class cocktail. Well, Shaker and Spoon can actually help you out with that. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription service that sends you everything you need to impress a date, your friends, or just to hang out by yourself pretending to be a mixologist with unique house-made ingredients. Just add your own alcohol. Each box from Shaker and Spoon comes with three recipes for up to 12 drinks and includes easy step-by-step -step instructions to craft a perfect drink. To begin, we're gonna start with a half ounce of the strawberry rhubarb syrup, followed by two ounces of bourbon, and oh, you know, luckily, I always have a little bit with me. And depending on how strong you like your drinks, you might say two ounces, give or take, right? 
Then we're going to vigorously shake this for about 15 to 30 seconds. This container is nice and frosty now. I'm gonna add some ice to our glass. Now we're gonna strain the first part of our drink into our glass. Oh, that does look good. Now we're gonna pour some honey pear soda right on top to finish that up. Great. And we'll give it a quick stir. And last, we're going to add some aromatic spray with this white sage hydrosol. Nice. And then enjoy. Oh, yeah. That is good. And it was super easy to make. I'm gonna try that again. Oh, yeah. I have some friends coming over this weekend and I cannot wait to share my shaker and spoon drinks with them. And you can save $20 today on your new subscription using code Jerry and the link in the description below. So while you're checking them out, I'm gonna finish my drink. Hmm. I might be here a while, so stay as long as you want.